I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science and welcome you among us. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that startling address. It makes me feel quite a sort of reasonable person, really. L luckily, he didn't tell you the other 94%. Uh, I've been to this part of the world several times, I'm glad to say, to investigate very important bits of history, like the history of the pork pie, uh, invented, I think, by a Mr. Pork in Milton Mowbray. Or maybe I've misremembered that one. But there were some really wonderful people here. Um, one of my favorite, very simple ones, was Thomas Cook, who decided when the railway came to Leicester that here was a way to cash in and separate people from their spare money. People were being paid now in the factories. And so he organized an expedition, an expedition from Leicester to Loughborough, practically across the world, for a, a temperance picnic that's like beer and sandwiches without the beer. And it cost one shilling, and it went on the 5th of July, 1841, and it was a sellout. 500 people went. And Thomas Cook went from strength to strength, and now really does go around the world. And there is a magnificent statue right outside the station. You'll see him standing there with a very, very battered leather suitcase. Well, it's actually bronze, but it looks leather. And then there was Robert Bakewell, who in the 18th century magnificently improved breeds of cattle and sheep. From scrawny little things, he deliberately chose the best specimens and bred those and got better and better cows and sheep until in the end, the cream from some of his cattle was so thick, they said a mouse could run across it without fear of sinking in. And taking some of this cream, a woman in a pub in the little village of Stilton made the most wonderful blue cheese, and that now is renowned around the world as a direct result of Robert Bakewell's improvements. But perhaps my favorite chap was Edmund Cartwright, who was a vicar in a little village called Godby Marwood. And he went to see the new cotton spinning machinery, which had been built by Richard Arkwright. And he thought this was absolutely wonderful. You could now spin cotton much faster than ever before. But there was a problem. There was going to be a cotton mountain. What could they do about it? He said, what we need is a weaving machine so that we can use up all this surplus cotton. And everyone said it's impossible. Weaving is far too complicated. You couldn't possibly invent a machine to weave cloth. But he said, hang on a sec. I read recently about a machine that plays chess, the Turk, an automaton chess player, a machine, it's just a sort of desk with some cogs inside, and it plays chess, and it beats the best chess players in Europe. And so he was determined, and he wandered up and down his sitting room making movements like this. He'd never seen a, weaver, a loom before, he'd never seen a weaving machine, but he nevertheless persevered, and he went ahead and he invented a machine to weave cloth. What he didn't know was that the automaton chess player was a cheat. It was actually a box with a very small chess player hidden inside. So he was inspired by a complete fraud. So that, let that be a lesson to you. Don't necessarily uh, take everything you, you see for granted. I just want to offer one tiny word of advice. You will have heard from my checkered career that I started off trying to be an academic, and I'm actually a triple dropout. Uh, and now I'm completely unemployed and I'm almost well, I couldn't say I have nothing to do. I'm actually occupied for the next 17 days, but, but they're all individual tiny things. So I have no job. It's much better not to make plans. One of the things I discovered when I was just getting my degree was that my grandmother said, what are you going to do now? Have any of your relatives said that? Yes. And I said, well, I'm a chemist. I guess I could get a job behind the counter in boots. Well, I've never, ever got that far. And may I say, do not worry if you don't have a plan. Life turns up the most wonderful opportunities, and what you want to do is grab them. You have to try and choose the good ones and grab them. And if there's one thing you really want to do in life, it's find out what you enjoy doing, and then get someone to pay you to do it. <laughs> I enjoy telling stories, and people now pay me to do that. So I'm, I'm a happy man. Good luck to you all, and congratulations on all your degrees.